Okay, um, and I'll be quick because I know we're running short on time, but just wanted to give everyone kind of an update on Grow More, Give More. Um, this project is, our program has expanded to include home gardens, community gardens, as well as commercial producers. So just wanted to kind of let everybody know where, uh, what 2021 looked like, um, 2022, and kind of where we're going in 2023. Um, and so this is our 2021 impacts. We don't have our 2022 data gathered yet, uh, but just wanted to show how many pounds of produce were donated um, based on average poundage distributed at the food banks um, that helped about 5,200 families and had a value of uh, 60, a little over $60,000. Uh, now, I, as everything else has gone up, um, so has fresh produce. So we anticipate that that dollar amount will be more. Um, obviously, for uh, 2022 going into 2023. Uh, but we also had 2,000 transplants that were grown and donated. So one part of this project is um, not only to kind of give a man a fish, but to teach a man to, fit, uh, teach a man to fish as well. And so we're working on um, kind of helping um, food bank recipients, soup kitchen recipients, um, new gardeners uh, learn uh, how to grow and how easy it can be on a small scale. Um, as part of 2021 into 2022, um, the, uh, we re received an Alabama Association of RCND Councils grant that started October 1 of 21 and wrapped up July um, 30th of 22. And part of that grant, um, it was right at $10,000. Uh, we received season extending supplies that we did. Um, that we distributed to 11 spotlight demonstration gardens around the state and basically these gardens uh, use that those um, supplies to show um, the general public how they could recreate those situations at home. There were row covers, frost cloth, uh, mini greenhouses to start transplants in um, various supplies. They, we also, uh, the grant also provided what we called grow kits, but basically it's nothing more glorious than um, buckets. And so we showed people how to grow plants, uh, whether it's tomatoes, squash, even some lettuces, that kind of thing, uh, in five-gallon buckets or two-gallon buckets, depending on the crop. And those were distributed at various workshops throughout the state, as well as seed packets with growing instructions. And those growing instructions uh, and supply lists on Grow More, on our Grow More, Give More uh, webpage have been translated into three languages. So the top three languages, foreign languages spoken in Alabama are Spanish, uh, simple Chinese, and Korean. So we've translated um, some of our Grow More, Give More um, documents into those languages to um, for use in the areas where those demographics are more prevalent. Uh, and then going forward, we received um, another grant from the Alabama Association of RCD Councils. Um, and uh, let me step back just a second. So we are, we had, Danny Carroll and I had kind of, um, we had, and her mostly, um, had started a home garden vegetable variety trial on a very small scale based on the University of Tennessee's um, trial. We've used their survey, kind of their markers and structure, uh, but she is partnering with Dr. De Silva this upcoming year, um, and I'm kind of helping as she needs me, um, but to expand that uh, variety trial, and uh, publish that data. So that's one project that we're working on that we're super excited about. There's lots of commercial variety trials, but we don't really have that. Um, and this is more of a citizen science type um, variety trial, but we're super excited about where that's headed um, going forward. And then, as I said, we received an additional grant this year for 2022 into 2023. And our focus this year are senior centers in food desert areas or low socioeconomic areas. And food desert can be rural or urban. In urban, um, that means that a grocery store is over a mile away, or excuse me, yeah, in urban, it's over a mile away. In rural settings, it's over 10 miles away. And um, as I mentioned earlier, with inflation affecting all of us, um, it is especially hard on our seniors, uh, senior citizens that are on fixed incomes. And so we wanted to... Um, partner with um, willing senior centers, those that we can um, get master gardeners and community volunteers to help with, and basically um, put in what we are calling a pop-up community garden. And so it differs from a, a regular community garden in that it's um, portable. So we're looking at the five-gallon bucket stands that are 
kind of up so it's easier for seniors to participate in, uh, to garden in. There's grow bags, there's several different things, but it's, it's a situation where if leadership changed at the senior center and they didn't want that anymore, it's not like you've got, you know, 10 race beds that you've got to try to tear down and that kind of thing. So it's a, um, and one other benefit of it is that it's, um, you know, it's affordably and easily recreated at home. So maybe they don't want to put in all of the things, but, you know, they may look and say, oh, well, I could do a couple of buckets at my house and just trying to promote that, um, garden uh, participation with uh, senior citizens. And then what we're looking at hopefully is um, they're gonna gather the produce that's there at that senior center. It will be distributed to the, the folks that come there and kind of work in that garden. And then we're even looking at maybe doing a competition and providing produce scales and seeing what senior center grows more and, and making it fun for them um, too. So that's where we're looking um, for 2022 into 2023. Um, and we appreciate all the support that we've gotten um, over the last, I guess, since it started in 2020. So just wanted to give everyone an update. We'll have information related to um, produce uh, amounts donated as far as poundage goes um, early 2023. And we um, anticipate it'll be right on track with what we did in 2021, if not more. Um, so anyway, but I appreciate all the help that I've gotten from this team, as well as um other teams within Extension and the general public, we, like I said, we've had home gardeners, community gardens, commercial producers. Um, there's been a lot of involvement. We really appreciate them as we hope to uh, continue this project moving forward. And that's all I have.